Hey everybody, this is Outdoor Core, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm just going to be using my voice and tell you the story rather than being out since it was a very short hike. Over along the Northwest Trail where all the bike riders get to take their daily ride. And right close to Marietta, PA, on the south side sits a huge collage of ruins. That would be the Muscle Man Furnace, and also known as the Vesta Furnace. As you can tell, I do many stories on old furnaces and industrial stories on places that shape Lancaster into what it is today. Finally, Muscle Man Furnace gets its story to tell. Built in 1868 by Henry Muscle Man and Henry Watts, it was competing with other furnaces around the area and it was the last of eight furnaces to be built on the river floodplain between Columbia and Marietta along with St. Charles No. 1 and 2 that I had another episode on. Being the last one built, it was also an anthracite fired hot blast iron furnace, which the gases from the furnace were captured and cleaned, put into the vertical stove, and ignited the heat to the brick oven to about 1000 degrees Fahrenheit. High pressure then would blow the heated air to the bustle pipe, which circled the base of the furnace which raised temperatures of the furnace and would reduce the amount of ease material used and increase the output of the furnace. And Muscle Man had five stoves. And what did it make? You guessed it. Just like the other furnaces I mentioned before, it produced pig iron. At the time, these furnaces smelt iron ore were the top of the line for its technology. That was very brief though because it was discovered that the use of coke as fuel was a better advantage. And no, I don't mean the drink or the drug either. I mean coke as in coal or the petroleum that had low ash and sulfur and was better heating and less dangerous. At this time, pig iron was needed for various production that led Lancaster County to be ranked high in the state for it. Muscle Man's pig iron production was massive and at its height actually produced 22,500 tons a year, which was very astonishing at the time. Iron ore itself came from various places such as Virginia, Maryland, Cornwall, and other local mines. The ore would then be delivered by railroad along the Susquehanna near the furnace and were moved out of the couriers by shovel and buggies. The raw materials that needed to go in the top of the furnace stack were then lifted by a steam power skip hoist which was an inclined rail that conveyed the materials upward. Then was put in for processing. When it was sold, it was sold under the name of Vesta Furnace. It got its name Vesta after the Roman goddess of the hearth whose temples had an internal flame. And that would be due to its long heat blast that would make quality pig iron. On 1887, the furnace was sold to Columbia Rolling Mill Company. And then in 1899, sold to the Susquehanna Iron and Steel Company. The company modernized it for the time and once again sells it to a company with a similar name, the Susquehanna Iron Company. Finally sold for the last time in 1917 to E.J. Levino of Sheridan, Pennsylvania. It was put into operation just to smelt scrap and to produce ferromanganese. Then was made into high grade steel for World War I. But the Lavino company had the furnace until 1949. Then the iron making ceased in 1920 and was dismantled after 1928. Afterwards, the property was acquired by Lancaster County to be part of the Chickies Rock Park and Northwest Trail. Open to the public, if you find yourself on the Northwest Trail and ride to the site, you're more than welcome to walk around, gaze upon what once was, and read from the tablets around to learn about the furnace. 
Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching. And if you liked it, click that like button. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe and the notification button so you can see videos when I post them. And like I always say, I'll see you on the next video.